there were people that wanted to end their lives or that had issues, hard issues with their parents or that run away. I do everything in my power if like it would be my own kid. And it's hard because yeah, yeah a lot of times I knew things that you don't want to know. I ran away when I was in like 10th grade. I like walked out the house. We got in like a big argument. Money doesn't make you happy. And one of my sisters has a husband. He would sell me for a fucking donut. All he cares about is money. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Brand Risk Podcast. I'm your host, Arab, along with my co-host, Edwin. And today we have on a guest who specializes in mental health. A fan of the Brand Risk Podcast, I'd say. He's always here watching our content, but somebody that we wanted to have on, too, just to discuss, you know, like, what it takes being... To not be ashamed of mental health, you know? So, so uh, Pappy's a life coach. I'd say. Is that a good intro? Yeah, that's correct. That's correct. What would you introduce yourself as if you were to introduce yourself? Uh, I'm just an old guy. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, just an old guy, a father. Um, that's very important, I think. I had a lot of things going on in my life. Um, I went from the absolute highs to super lows. Right. I always educated myself and i love helping people so you yeah. you work with a lot of fortnite professionals exactly yeah do do you see that they are they tend to be more depressed than other esports um no i only do fortnite okay because i never did anything else before actually i wasn't in regular uh, sports but uh, that was the car uh, industry um and then entrepreneurs but for me the the pros for me they're entrepreneurs i see them in that direction have they, you so have I, you always done stuff in in mental health like you said like from industry to industry have you always been in, in mental health or no? no 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 i've always been an entrepreneur so gotcha. so so well you're considered a life coach basically right like more so yeah what does yeah. that entail? Because a lot of people don't know what, you know, like what entails a life coach. Like, are we as streamers, are we considered life coaches just for talking to people all day and like helping them with their problems? Like, what does a life coach do specifically? Um, it helps. It helps people. That's definitely one part of, of the things. Of course, I, I did a lot more uh, educational things <laughs> to right. make sure I, I understand people. To make sure I can get in their heads that because everybody is different. Right. And everybody responds different. Um, there might be um, background issues or um, like some people have autism. Some people have huge anxieties. Um, that's something you can't do as a streamer. But that's whenever I work with, with a pro or even semi-pro or who... I reach out to um, I always like to go into the core uh, of their issues and it can be something very non Fortnite related but why would they want to so, so, so you're like a therapist in a sense also not really no uh, my, yeah, in my, a sense maybe yeah yeah but... my, my question is you know you say you, you, you know you're an entrepreneur beforehand like how, how did you end up doing this like to the point where people trust you with being a, a mental health coach you get what i'm saying because i feel like i feel like typically to be known as a mental health coach by a community you have to kind of build that up so how, like take us through that how'd you go from like being an entrepreneur like what got you into mental like health coaching and like how did people start respecting your opinion in that realm of things, you know what I mean? Okay, so um, I've always found the, the mind very fascinating, how people reacted. I've always been a balanced guy, and people around me were not so balanced. Um, I've always been the guy that people came to talk to. And um, so in, when I was young, I was an organizer of the drift scene, the car drift scene, nice. car racing. And my drivers, because we did shows, my drivers needed to drive with their cars 
two millimeter from each other and if they oh, wouldn't like, whoa that's crazy yeah like what you have in japan and stuff like that so we had tandem or triple drifts and they needed to 100 percent rely on each other if they didn't they would crash and we would do pre-programs of a dtm or of even What's DTM? formula ones um it's a german touring car okay uh competition one of the huge ones so it's like so formula one in over there yeah like like really big uh mm -hmm. race car events and we did the pre-program but like everything was packed um so yeah nothing can happen there everybody needed to trust each other and that's how i developed myself actually i developed myself when i was 12 years old already my father was in the rally scene and he was there very big you're uh, like will together. ferrell in talladega nights <laughs> i don't i don't really watch movies. Yeah. i don't know no it's okay they'll like that one because they know like yeah okay, yeah. okay. you yeah. shake and just bake like sorry you shake and bake shake and bake Oh, he for sure shakes and bakes. He for sure shakes okay. and bakes. Yeah, I, I shake and bake. Yeah, <laughs> you can tell. <laughs> no, so my father was big in the rally scene, and um, he would go around with the rally drivers, and he would drop me with the team. Mm -hmm. And one of my favorite persons there was the, the mental coach there, and he took me everywhere. But we traveled the world, uh, the world actually. So at a young age, I was traveling with him. So that's where it sparked initially. But then I did all kinds of things. What, at what age were myself. you at this point? Um, it started from 12 till 15. Okay. 16. So, so you already traveled young. the world. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's I've his way of telling traveled. you guys you ain't shit. <laughs> no, 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 bro, no, 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 bro, bro. Not just that. He goes, oh yeah, by like around fifteen, I traveled the world. But before that, my dad was a fucking rallycross driver. I was in the fucking drifting car scene at age twelve. You ever seen Tokyo oh, no, Drift? No, no. I, I filmed that movie. <laughs> I was every no, no, actor no. in that movie. Yeah. No, no, no. You know the Asian, Actually, you know the Asian guy that died. That was me. Anyways. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, I, I brought over the 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 drift scene from Tokyo all the way to Europe. So uh, no way. But that was at age 20. So, yeah. So do you speak Japanese? Quite... No, no. Arigato. That's I knew some words, but not are too you many. a professional samurai warrior? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I could see I, it. Like I could see I it. I tell people before I train, they uh, do you know uh, Mr. Miyagi? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that that's me basically. Oh, that's okay. How I, work with I see that. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. Okay, I get what yeah. you're saying. <laughs> um, do you? So so you basically get teammates to trust each other. You you look. You're not, uh, you know, a. You don't have the credentials to be a therapist, but you're basically a therapist. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you can't say you're a therapist, I guess, but I mean, that's yeah. what you do. Like, that's what we that's what we all are, right? We talk to people and we get them out of their stuff, but. I want to dive into like how you do it as someone who does it as a full-time job rather than just like us talking to people and giving them advice, you know? So what is the difference that, you know, a Fortnite pro comes up to you who's really good or whatever, and they're, what, what do they come up to you for when they're depressed, when they don't trust their teammates? Like, what is it? It can be anything. Um, like when they have bad days, um, like for instance today uh a player came the past two weeks he had a lot of issues he didn't felt in his normal doing he missed shots and he didn't know what it was was it a peripheral issue or was it his mind and i knew it was his mind because i wanted to reach out to him as well but he he just did it before me you could tell and by what his tweets or something i like my players, I stalk them. I'm, okay. I'm like Makes a sense. real stalker. Makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> I I'm in I'm in so much on Twitch watching their Twitch or their friends' Twitch so I can hear them or like, Yeah, to make I sure like they're on the best performance. Because you can tell when something's off. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I can tell from their tweets, I can tell how they react to me 
or I, I have so many people around them that I, I just try yeah, to spies. juggle around. Yeah, yeah, double actually, agents. I do, yeah. Yeah, yeah oh. I do have double agents. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> Definitely it's like I paid off games. everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so, did, did you, like, when you got into this, uh, as like a mental health coach for esports specifically, did you start off in other teams, or was was the team you're on right now like the first team that uh, recognized you as their mental health coach? Um, I was in a smaller smaller team, um, but that was more because I was friends with the owner, and yeah, he wanted to, he want, he knew what I could do, and he wanted to see me grow as well. Um, but it started very weird because I got sick and then together, basically to keep it short, I wanted to like be a pro player myself. <laughs> I thought that was possible because I In have Fortnite? Already, yeah. That's I, cool. I already I think that's knew, cool. I knew fast that it wasn't possible, but I followed so Why, many just coaching the lessons. Uh, no. Age, yeah, one hundred percent age, and my illness. So definitely my illness. Yeah, you have MS disease, right? That's what it says yeah. in there. What is that? Yeah. Um, it's actually it's right now they're still um, looking what it is exactly. The first diagnose was MS because yeah, I needed. What is name. that? Um, basically everything like uh, my nerves. Everything like my muscles in my body get uh, deteriorated. Okay. Um, my brain goes backwards as well. Really. Um, so maybe sometimes I'm looking for words. That is because of that. Uh huh. <laughs> um, mm. I I used to be perfect English, better than than Dutch. Um, and for instance, I have it's harder for me to speak Dutch now than English. Hmm. And like everybody around me is dutch so um that's very weird but yeah so they don't have anything like for certain what your disease is but they give you a label no. for now just to yeah right now so like the neurologist said okay right now with what we have uh we're going in the direction of ms and um i think three months ago i did another muscle biopsy um and there was some weird things inside <laughs> so now they're yeah it's from test till test till test and in the neuromuscular diseases there's so many but so rare diseases that it yeah it's hard to pinpoint yeah it's hard to so, tell like which one it could possibly be well yeah. well for for going back to what you're saying about being a pro um, I think that these days, man, I think that that, that phrase is very, uh, is used very broadly. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, uh, you know, acting like Tommy is a pro in my eyes, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. but, but, you know, I, I think that, um, I don't think that it was impossible. You know I mean? It's definitely hard because of the things that you have, you, you have going on, especially the MS specifically more so than the age or anything like, cause you know, I would say the MS is the biggest reason because the uh the age thing man i love seeing people shatter that man i love seeing people like mama benji i love seeing people like uh like acting like tommy you know what i mean playing and actually trying to to get some serious games in but but hey man you know the thing is though being a part of the community helping the way you do is still you know almost more productive than even you know any pro yeah. dreams you know Ex exactly and that's why i loved it because i was following following these coaching lessons um and then it was group coaching lessons and there it hit me. All these guys were working so hard, but once they started the game, everything that they learned was gone. And I started to text them like, come on, push through. No, you can't give up the first or the second game. And that was like three people. Uh, it was Kaffe 7 in Europe, and I helped them through. What do and you mean night, once they started, everything was gone? You're saying like they would learn things, but not apply them? Yeah, not apply them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. When they, not, not when they first started playing the game, but like when they got into a tournament. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So uh, different layers and everything. So it was actually with, with Destinies. Uh, he would say like, yeah, you need to, next time you need to do this, this layer, that layer, um, get refreshes. And they just would forget it because they were so stressed. 
they would right. be shaking. There would be yeah, so much going on in their head that they couldn't do it. And I mean, yeah, I mean, dude, I I feel that because I feel like whenever um, whenever I play a game, I play it super aggressively, and that's when I play well. But whenever there's something on the line like money or if it's like a competition at all, like even not even like a tournament, like just between friends, I play like shit. I don't know. Like whenever I used to one v one people in Fortnite, I would just W key the entire time. I'd win more times than not. But then when it's like, oh, like out of 10, like I'd start playing like a bitch and I'd start losing. So I, I never yeah. understood that why the mentality on that was so different. But yeah, once your brain takes over that split second, definitely with low only pros, think with your dick. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah exactly no but only when you're in end game and when you lose two seconds then it's already over so yeah um do you think your disease made you want to get into this like was that a reason mm, no no because i was looking back i was helping another manager and i took um my notes that i made eight years ago and in my notes it says clearly i want to give back to people i want to help people this is my higher purpose and that was when i still had my businesses so uh back then i wanted to be a business angel and stuff like that but it's always been my bigger goal to to do what i do now it just gave me a push that I noticed these kids need it really hard on so many levels. And yeah. Now, let you, me go ahead. I was going to say, do you, have, do you have a notable success in what you do? Like, was there like a time where like, yo, this kid really needed help. You helped him. And then he went off and like popped off and killed it. Like, do you have like a, a story like that or no? Mm, yeah, multiple. Um, the biggest example was Hen, Shepix and Janice. They split it two days before FNCS. I saw it on Twitter. I already was uh, texting him. And then I just wrote on Twitter like, okay, well, if you give me a chance, I'll fix this. And his mom jumped onto it. And that night we started talking. And Ooh. yeah, they won, they won FNCS. Wow. So how did you, how did you broker that? How did you, how did you end up fixing it? You're like, all right, fellas. Could fucking around, you know what I mean? Like, what, like, what, what were the magic words that you said that where everyone was like, "Oh shit, let's work as a team," you know what I mean? Yeah, I was following Hen for a longer time. Um, at that time, I knew Chapix, but didn't really knew him. Um, but I just went from what I knew about Hen, and then st I started talking. And basically, what came up is, although they were playing longer together, they didn't know each other. Oh, okay. So, right. And you want to be friends with your teammates? Yes and no. But yeah, you need to you need to know certain things. Um, like we all know that Hen can sing amazingly. Yeah. But great voice. I've always yeah. When I I've always said Hen, he needs to sing. Like that was in my notes. When Hen starts to sing, his gameplay is so much better. Really. But. It annoys his teammates because they're <laughs> different. That's and then you get friction. And that's when it can go wrong. In like in in high um when things go bad, then you get triggered so fast. And if then that guy yeah. starts singing, yeah, the triggers oh my go God. through the roof. For sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah For yeah. sure. See, see, and that's cool because that shows how observational you are, because like it no one would catch that that he's actually that he plays better or you think he plays better when he's singing i feel like that you know like the flow state they say that there's like different triggers for for everyone like everyone has different things that triggers them into the flow state and yep. that might be one of his triggers you know but i i mean that's cool that you even noticed that it's very uh you know good good observation i guess so what's the solution there they let him sing um mute button okay <laughs> so he doesn't he doesn't need to sing to an audience he just needs to sing to himself uh, yeah so the mute button that was one of the things um yeah there were there were multiple things that i didn't know each other um also they needed to talk more afterwards and not end and go off and leave it till next time because those all those triggers it piles up and it get bigger and bigger and then it's it explodes 
it's yeah you can see it like when you have a girlfriend and when she tells you like yeah you you can't put the laundry there or you leave this there or that and yeah that works in the beginning but in the end more and more of those things pile up and then the suitcase stands ready and she's gone no, see, no so that's, that's how i get rid of her no, the way yeah. you solve it, the way you solve it though, is like after it gets like too much after a while, what I've learned is it's very important to to learn this. Ready, watch. It's yeah, yeah, step into it. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, gotta, you gotta step into it. It's like you're doing a dab, but then you know, you you really you know oh, okay, really okay, step yeah. into it. You know what I mean? It, it Sorry, works for I, me. You know, I taught him that one. That one's tradition. But what uh. if you have a strong what if you have a stronger woman? Uh, oh my god, I wouldn't I wouldn't be yeah, getting a woman I Well then she probably has a penis. Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> then I'm the woman. Then I'm the one getting clapped <laughs> for sure. Yeah, um, Pappy, you have three children. Yeah. Do any of them play Fortnite? Yeah. Really? They play Fortnite a lot. Um, the six-year-old. Um, What's his name was... so I can get him banned? Okay, <laughs> Vin Vintage. Vintage is his name. Oh, that's cool. That's a cool name. That's cool. There's a yeah. hundred of those. I won't find them. No, exactly. <laughs> no. Vintage so, season, uh, vintage FN, vintage TV. Which one? Always vintage. Oh, damn. <laughs> is that no, that's so, not, is that is that his real name? Yeah, his real name is Vintage it, Edwin. Vintage is no his way. Real name. That's yeah. sick. That's really cool. Wait, Man, his actual name, name is Vintage. Yeah. So we made from something. Oh, I was old, kidding. <laughs> something new. <laughs> this guy uh, uh, <laughs> This guy gave his son a gamer tag name. I like that. For I'm real. A, I'm gonna call yeah. my son Arab Jr. No, you gotta you gotta name him Icy Knife. <laughs> yeah, my first, That's name. my first name. That's a cool name though. Cause like that could yeah. actually work as a real name. Yeah, I like, like that. Yo, a lot, vintage. Actually. That's cool. Yeah, it is a real name, so yeah. he, he, he's the only guy with that name, I think. So yeah. but that's nice. So we can Vinny too. Vin, yeah. Vinny. Yeah. Vin. Oh. yeah. Vin Diesel. Yeah. Vin exactly. Diesel. Family. <laughs> Family. So they play yeah, Fortnite, nice. all your kids? Uh, yeah, the daughter. She doesn't play Fortnite. Yeah. No. Sexism and gaming. So, Felt that. Yeah, so I don't she let plays her Warzone. around. She uh. plays Warzone. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> no. no, and I don't let her around Fortnite guys either. So. Yeah, smart no. move. <laughs> very yeah, she smart had a boyfriend, move. but uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very smart move. Um, so does this? So my question: When you come to doing life coach, I've always wondered how the the pricing and the exclusivity with teams work. So, like, let's say you're on a team now, right? Are yeah. you still able to coach other people? Life coach yeah, other people. And how does yeah, how's the how do you get paid when you life coach someone? How do you make this a job? Because obviously, you start out. It's free, but then you're so well known and it's proven that you can do, you can alter people's perspectives, performances. Um, how, how does that work? How's that? Like, how do you go up to a kid and tell him and try to explain to him that your ability to change his mental fortitude has made him place better if we're making more money, therefore it's probably worth like you deserve to get paid. Yeah, well, until um, I got signed, everything I did was for free. Okay. So I always did it for free. I'm, I'm changing it. But there were a lot of times harder issues that I also was doing. So I just take it under one big same thing. But um, yeah, there were people that wanted to end their lives or that had issues, heart issues with their parents or that run away, right. even when I was texting them. And I think those things, they need to stay for free. But yeah. once it comes to performance, yeah, yeah. then, then um, yeah, then I, I need to charge now. Uh -huh. But it's only now. Before, I just saw it as my higher purpose, give back and feel good about yeah. it. So, yeah. So... So, like, let's say in a scenario where somebody does run away from their parents and they're telling you about it, do you, like, is it up to you to tell the parents or no, you, like, you're with the kid and you're just making sure that they're staying safe? Yeah, so even 
when I when also parents are involved, I say one thing. I don't tell you anything. Yeah. I will I'm a father myself and I will make sure that I do everything in my power if like it would be my own kid. Yeah. But I can't tell you things. It makes sense. Because they don't want to yeah. tell their parents. They want to tell somebody yeah. that'll give them advice, but not their parents, because their parents yeah. can punish them. And it's hard because yeah. yeah, a lot of times I knew things that you don't want to know. And yeah. Yeah. I've never told this story, Dude. but I ran away. I ran away when I was in like tenth grade. No but, way. But I didn't run away. Really? I just, I just went down the street. I took like I had like a like I had like a thousand dollars I had made off scarce or something. And I like took it in an envelope. Like I had an envelope hidden. I like my mom knew and I like walked out the house. We got in like a big argument. I didn't even run away. I just went two houses down. And I just chilled. <laughs> I just like chilled, but it was around the corner and she thought I fucking ran. My dad was in Lebanon. She called my uncle. My uncle came with his truck, like searching the neighborhood and he found me. And like we went, I chilled with him a little. He told her I was okay. It was like I've never, t I've, oh, never told, I've never told I've never told that shout story. Shout out to your uncle. Yeah, yeah. No, that, I, I didn't. I didn't. I, yeah, you never told me that story. That's crazy. Yeah, That's, I mean, it's not. It's, it's not one of like those cool stories that I got. You know, for it's sure. Like, yeah, for yeah. sure. It's nah, like I it's was a bitch. Fuck. Like, why did I run it's, away it, from my mom? Because nah, we got in an nah, argument, not even bro. That, like, dude, not even she that. wouldn't let me you go even... hang out with. No, bro. I had like, like at the time, all my friends were hanging out or whatever. And I had like my first girlfriend who I'd like, we'd only held hands or whatever. And she wouldn't let me go out with them or some shit. And we got like in a big <laughs> argument, like, et cetera. And I, dude, I don't know why. Maybe it's cause like I got a B or something like some shit like that. And it was so unnecessary. And I was like, all right, I'm going to win this one. So I just fucking. Dude, just... <laughs> the, the, the best part about that entire story is my man said he ran away, but in reality, he went two houses down. Yeah, was time yeah. to... <laughs> dude, 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 you know, it's funny in a white household, that's just, just regular. Like in our households, bro, like us yeah. not being there, like that's serious, bro. Yeah. Like, yeah, like, bro. Like dude, you're somewhere and your mom doesn't know. I didn't go dude. to a house. I just went and chilled like outside on like outside two houses down. Like I wasn't yeah. at a homie's house or anything. Oh, oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. You're just like playing. But it was out. That's... Yeah, it was out of her fucking reach, and she thought like I had grabbed all my 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 envelope of a thousand dollars, thinking that that's <laughs> you're, like a hot you're shit or something, life, bro. Dude. Like that's funny as fuck. <laughs> it was literally all the money I had saved up, bro, over birthdays and shit over years, and I had like had it hidden under a desk, and I grabbed yeah. that bitch and I walked out. <laughs> You're like you're like this should this should last me a year for sure. You're like I'm fucking <laughs> bro, exactly. bro. This reminds me of a time where like my my parents were the same way, bro. Like if if I was not in sight, like there it was a problem. But I used to skateboard and I used to tell my mom I'm going down the street. Like I'll be like at the stop sign at the end of the road. And after a while, I got comfortable and I would go down to the beach, bro. And it was far. It was like a 20 minute skate, like 25 minute skate. And and one time my mom called me. She's like, hey, where are you? I don't see you at the end of the street. I'm like, oh, I'm right there. I'll be there in a minute. Dude, I have never skated faster in my fucking <laughs> life, dude. I have never skated faster, bro. And uh, how yeah, far no. were you? 10 minutes? No, I was like 20 minutes away, bro. I, I It's funny because I had to go up a bridge, right? So like up a bridge and down a bridge to get to like the beach uh -huh. and on the way back when I knew my mom was going to kick my ass, I ran up the bridge, bro. Cause like I didn't yeah. like, usually just like skate like real slow. I ran up the bridge and as soon as I got on the top, I hopped on my skateboard and I just went down it as fast as I could. I didn't care if I ate shit, dude. I was like, fuck it. So I was like, honestly, honestly, you get eat... beat by a, by a brown woman and that's not dude, the best. <laughs> dude, dude it, here's the hilarious part of my mentality going down the other side of the bridge on the skateboard. I said, if I fucking fall and eat shit, at least she's not going to hit me because I'm already, I'm already hurt. At least yeah, like she's yeah, not, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Pappy, but, uh, you, uh, <laughs> you're a little bit older than us. 39, right? Yeah. 39. You ever, uh, ran away from home? Were you ever the mischievous child? Um, not really, but I wasn't allowed to do a lot of stuff, mm. but I was smarter than you, Edwin. Yeah. So, the, the, that's, were... not, that's not hard to do my friend the standard is real low right there <laughs> that's not saying yeah. much bro so i had a friend uh, he would stay at my place um and what i age? would just um i would say 16 17 mm. and i would crawl out of the window and <laughs> dude i've never party. done that you guys i never did that like, either i never did that either it's crazy to me that kids do that but the yeah. worst part was I was driving my bike and all of a sudden 
was 2 a.m. The cop stopped me. And I was like, oh, what am I going to do now? They were like, what are you doing here this late? And the only thing I could imagine, because I was driving to there, like, yeah, I'm going home now. Oh, you're on a moped, Wait. not on a, not on like a no, bicycle, no, like on a moped bike. No, like a real bicycle. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So I was like, shoot, what, what, what can I do? I just, and then I told it, yeah, but I'm this guy who lives there. So it's not so far anymore. And they were like, okay, but hurry, hurry. But I didn't have lights, anything on my bike. Bike and unfortunately, oh, yeah. my father knows all the cops. Ah, uh, so mm. eventually he knew. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah, that's probably yeah. that's probably good to know, especially if you're living in an area for a long time. Get to know yeah, all the yeah. cops, especially with yeah. our skin tone. Uh. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> bro, bro, dude, one one last like like story from being younger so i always wanted a motorcycle and my parents would obviously never buy it for me but when i got enough money i i didn't even ask my parents i just bought it and i came home with it and i was like this is a problem and we're gonna get through it boys like that's literally what i did i literally bought a motorcycle i came home with it i was like what, what are we gonna do i was like we can try selling it or whatever but i'm gonna have it for at least a week so yeah. what i would do is at night I would, uh, cause my car is so fucking loud, dude. It'll wake up the entire neighborhood every time I leave. And it wakes up my parents when I, when I'd leave. So at night, what I would do is I'd open the side door of the garage and I'd push my motorcycle out the side door and I'd push my motorcycle down the street. Like, like just like far do down the street. your parents like not wake? I guess their room is far away from your garage. So far, so far. It's on the other, other side of the house. So and is so, mine, but there's a fucking chime when you open the door. My mom will wake up if she hears me step out my room. Like, yeah. Guys. Thankfully, I never had I never had the foreign parent chime door. No, and that's a real thing, bro. Like, uh, my friend De Kevin Dabadine, his every single ha the cupboards had chimes, bro. If you <laughs> wanted ramen, you, everyone knew. You know what I mean? But uh, but anyways, yeah, I'd push my bike down the street and then I'd start it way the fuck down the street and that'd be out and then they wouldn't know. Like, I'd come back at like three a.m. or whatever. But anyways, <laughs> um. Pappy, what uh, what advice do you do you would you give these kids listening, like, just in general that need help getting to the next step or whatever it is? Um, oh, there's so many. There's so many. That's yeah. the hard part. There's not a typical thing that I can tell them what they need to do. Um, goal setting is very important and what be is realistic. It? Goal setting? What's that? Like if you, oh, goal setting. If, okay, okay. Goal setting, yeah. So the biggest issue is that people want to make grants in the first week that they decided to go pro. And when they don't make it, that's when their mental goes down and everything goes bad. Yeah. But yeah, like having goals is good, but keep them realistic. Mm hmm and gr like grow with your goals right so yeah I, dude and and actually a, to a note to that is if you create a goal that is unreachable not only will you not reach the goal but you'll get discouraged because you didn't reach the goal like i always tell my chat from when i first first started streaming like and I actually started getting some viewers and some support i made my my daily sub goal on stream is 10. so every day when i go live it says zero out of 10. And now I'm big enough to where I, I hit that sub goal like every night, like pretty reliably. Like I, it just always does. But and my chat always tells me, why don't I up it? Why don't I like make it higher? And I'm like, well, when I make it 10, we know we're probably going to hit it. And when we hit it, it feels like a victory. And then, you know, it, it, it feels good. You know, I feel good that we hit that goal. Everyone else does as well. And uh, it's not like if I had like a hundred sub a night goal, we, you know, you never hit it and, and it doesn't feel good. You know what I mean? So to your point, Make goals for sure, but make them ascertainable ones. Don't make them unrealistic ones, you know what I mean, to a degree. Have yeah. big ones, but you got to work to them, you know what I mean? Yeah, short-term and long-term goals. My yeah, thing is, yeah, exactly, exactly. I don't, I don't do, like, specific number goals. Like, yeah. I want to hit yeah, yeah. 50K by the end of the whatever, you know? It's more like, okay, I want to do this piece of content and, and solidify a foundation for this series or whatever by this time you know and that's that's the goal it's like yeah all right by the end of october will i have 
figured out a flow of IRL content and enough flow of, of gaming content to be able to, you know, make those both sufficient rather than saying, okay, I want 65,000 subscribers by the end of the month. Like it's never, and there's people that do do that, right? I mean, you can look at people like Arak on YouTube who, who did that and they reached it and like, that's different. You're looking at these people who are anomalies. I'd rather set goals of specific pieces of content that improve myself. So as long as by this time I've improved myself in X amount of, you know, whatever, I'm happy. Cause like, I remember, basically, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Basically, if you can grow every day, mm -hmm. that's the most important part for every, everybody. If you grow every day, if you learn something new every day, then once you're old as me, you're super wise right. and you crush every goal. Yeah. And like, mm -hmm. and like, here's the thing, like, let's say you're improving 5% every month or 10% every month. Well, 10 months from now, that 10% is going to be worth more than it is now. Yeah. You know, cause you're getting 10% extra every time that's going to be, you know, way more. So, yeah. And there will yeah. be things that, that make you boom if you think outside of the box, but that's additional. Yeah. So. No, you definitely need yeah. those though. I think those are good to to push yourself to try new things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, I think that there's like actually a like a um a thing in psychology where it's like you have to have stepping stone goals that help you build up to like a big one. You know what I mean? Like like if you do this and this and this, it'll inevitably lead to this. You know what I mean? Like a bigger yeah. goal that you wanted to accomplish. And uh, and yeah, man. Yeah. I think that and, and you know, going back to like the the age and wisdom thing. I think that a lot of like when you when you get old man when you get older you learn a lot of things that people told you when you were younger but you never listened to them you know what i mean so it's like like the biggest thing for like younger people too is like when somebody gives you advice like actually try to listen to it like try to not have to figure it out for yourself because you'll figure it out for yourself but it'll be fucking tough man and ever yeah. since i started listening to people that were smarter than me in my life my life improved a lot you know but when i when i started admitting to myself that i don't know everything was a, a big, you know, success for me personally. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Pappy. Yep. Yeah. Is there anything that, that you wish you could have done better by the time you're 39? Like, is there anything that you, we, we, we haven't really ever had a guest that is as old and wise as you. Not yet, um... you know, and, and for somebody who, by the time I got in college, I realized that everything my parents were telling me was correct. And here I was, a dumbass. You know? Like, I got into college, I remember, it was like my second year in college, and some shit happened. And I was like, my parents told me this would happen. Yeah, dude, it's the worst. You know? <laughs> it's the fucking and worst. I, and, and that's when I registered. I was like, they were right this whole time. Everything they tell yeah. me, it's happened. You know? Like, they, they've lived it. I mean, they've lived, they've fucking double my life on me, you know? So <laughs> what would, like, what advice would you give? Because that's the advice that I would give to kids listening. Like, listen, you're not going to learn until you're at that age, maybe later, maybe earlier. I doubt you'll learn earlier. But just keep in mind that when it does happen, we told you that your parents were right. As somebody who is your age oh or God. just a little bit older than you, like, your parents are right most of the time. And they want you, or, I mean... Maybe if you come from a good household, maybe it's different. Um, or if you come from a bad household, I'm sure there's differences. But a lot of the time, like when your parents tell you something that that is going to be dangerous for you, whatever, they're right. What advice would you give th the kids listening? Um, it's a tough one because I'm always hesitant. Like you say, good household and less good households. Yeah, uh, and there's many less good household. Of course, there's as well. differences. Everyone has dealt cards. Yeah. yeah. So, but definitely, um, parents and older women, uh, older, <laughs> older people, not women. Okay, it's okay, Pappy. Yeah. Older, yeah. older women. You, you helped. You helped. I, yeah, wing, you I helped was, wingman it the other day too. The yeah, way. I was thinking about the milf. Uh, thing. <laughs> <laughs> my man has a few monitors open right now. I guess. <laughs> yeah. So now, um, people live their lives, and it's good that you learn the hard way, but it 
doesn't always need to be the hard way. Mm. Yes. So yes. it is good that you learn the hard way because I sometimes, a stupid example, one of the guys got really drunk, um, really drunk, didn't know anything. It was his first time. Did horrible in a tournament. And, yeah. Did horrible it in a tournament. Close, close to a tournament and uh, he felt horrible. My first, I could say like, yeah, this is so bad, definitely at your age or stuff like that. And I was like, oh my God, I remember the first time I felt like that and I would never touch it again. So lesson learned at that point. Yeah. So I'm not the typical parent that will, yeah, will be mad or something because, but many parents would yeah. freak out and say, no, you can never drink again or stuff like yeah, that's a realistic either. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, listen to older people because they they went through it. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Plus, like on a on a mental health coach note, I don't think any kid would want to hear their <laughs> mental health coach telling them you shouldn't you shouldn't have done that. Drinking's really you know you just like yeah it, it helps it helps when you tell them what happened with you. You know I mean you, you you're more relatable and. Yeah. Uh, and to the point of like, you know, you don't have to learn everything the hard way. I agree. I 100% agree. You don't have to learn things the hard way. I will say there are some things that some people should learn the hard way because it's like a character development thing. You know what I mean? It makes you a better person when you have to go through some adversity sometimes. But, um, you know, it, it, the, the problem is people learn things the hard way most of the time because everyone's pretty bad at taking other people's advice. You know what I mean, for some reason, we have this like human ego thing where we're right you know we don't want to believe anyone's you know uh you know more intelligent or, or more correct than we are unless they have proven it in a super visual way like for example it's not hard to listen to a rich guy it's not hard to listen to somebody who has like a crazy level of success like if clicks told you to if you're a fortnite pro and clicks told you some advice you'd be like fuck it whatever click says you know what i mean but like you have to be able to take other people's words of advice as well not just people that you look up to you know what i mean yeah. yeah, Daddy Clicks told me that I'm the goat and I'm the big shitter, so. <laughs> you do take big one. shits. You really do. They are, <laughs> they are um, massive. Happy to, to, Go ahead. To jump in, into that part, what I... So, another, like, a team. Um, I told them, for example, you're good now. If you don't do what I tell you now, you're going to split right after FNCS. And two weeks later, they split it again. We're talking about the same team. But they split it again because they went into their own, their same patterns. And I already knew because I wrote it so many times in the Discord and I knew it would happen. But I, I'm the guy who would make sure they made that mistake. Now... To how do you get them to accept wanting you, like, letting you talk to them? Why, why would I ever accept this dude who doesn't play, who doesn't understand, like, I'm a kid, you know? Why, why, would, I, why would your advice ever be good to me? Like, why would I ever want you to come hang out with me and my friends in Discord and talk to us about shit? Um, because I will make sure that I know what I'm saying and I will convince them anyway. Um, I, I personally, I challenge myself all the time and also in game. So I'm playing a lot of hours really in this game. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. There was a time like eight to 10 hours a day right. just playing the game. Uh, I did FNCS when, and the day before a mosquito, uh, like, I had an allergic reaction on my hand, it was swollen up like this. I could only move two fingers and my mouse. So only one build, uh, my mouse, and I had an incredible result. Not perfectly. Yeah, for, for what you'd expect, yeah. But I only have movement, and that's like what, what you, why I love your challenges as well. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, bro. <laughs> and, and, yeah, and I like to I like to copy them and, and do them, make bro. Them my own. Yeah, I don't own yeah. them, you know. 
I just I like to do things that I think are I think it's more entertaining watching those than it is watching someone place fifth or third or you know. Yeah. I don't yeah. like I do it for the for the men like two two weeks ago I removed all my binds. Yeah. I upped my send, I doubled my sends. Yeah. And instead of a left click edit, I'm right click edit. So basically the worst what you can think of. Yeah. <laughs> That's horrible. I I just wanted to know what the guys feel. And oh, they do that? Some of them do that? A lot of people want to go to uh, not full binds, but even like, ult uh, like the best binds, the ultimate binds. They want to change because they're stuck on their unoptimal binds. Yeah. For movement or whatever. Yeah, and, and that's I a thing. It's a feel. thing for sure. Yeah. And it's, and I have to say, it was the one of the hardest things I did so far. Yeah, changing binds through. sucks. Yeah. It takes, yeah. You, it takes you a month and a half plus of cranking every day to even get remotely close to... But then it becomes yeah. natural. I'm now two weeks in and I'm yeah. at my old level, better. But now at least I can talk to the guys like, hey, I did this. And here you can see the begin, beginning and the end. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I know what you feel. Or my Kovac scores are pretty okay. Yeah. So I know the Kovac grind. So I can explain them like, hey, if you put in the grind. That's cool that you do all that so that you understand like what they're feeling. Yeah. Do yeah, you... I, I, I need to. Is yeah. this your full time thing? Yeah, because um, once I became sick, I couldn't do anything else. Mm. And this, this was my outlet. So that was very, to... that was very recent. Yeah. How yeah, long ago? My my body stopped sixth uh, August of 2019. Wow! And in you December were the first case of COVID. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> no, 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 no. He, he had to think about it for a minute. Like, no, I don't no, think no, it was. No, but uh, at at the I stopped my businesses at the end um, of 2019, and then COVID came in. Yeah. And that was the worst impact on my life ever. Uh-huh. So mentally from everything. Just COVID um, fucked everyone. Yeah. Yeah, mentally, but also I went from rich to poor. Mm -hmm. COVID so, COVID fucked people like that. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So do you is there anything uh, I like I kind of touched on this, but we never got to it. Is there anything that you as a 39 year old wise man would regret is there anything you regret that you never got to pursue because you know we're big on like pushing people to pursue their dreams you know it's not about having the craziest car and a fucking golden toilet you know like edwin and i are very big on the idea of being able to spend your money on memories and and experiences rather than luxuries etc right so like you know we live modest but we do whatever we want whenever we want the and only things that i would regret then would be uh, being around my kids um yeah. having to watch the first footsteps of them through facetime and not really seeing them i was in us mm -hmm. um and i had to watch it like that so um yeah that's that's the hardest part memories yeah and yeah. uh I was a workaholic, huge workaholic. Um, I had the fancy cars, but yeah, I know. I knew back then as well, but now 100% know money doesn't make you happy. Bro, yeah. I, I, I always think about like, you know, I get, I get into like a, a workaholic state of mind sometimes too. And like the one person that I always make sure I see no matter how crazy I get is, is my mom. No matter how workaholic I get is my mom, because I think about this thing. I saw it somewhere. I forget what it was, but it was basically how, you know, when you die, when you're about to die, when you're at the, at the, at the doors of death and you're laying in a hospital bed, all of the money that you ever made won't be there sharing memories with you and hanging out with you and telling you they care about you and this and that. It's going to be you and a fucking nurse that doesn't like you and, and, and all of your fucking money. You not, know if, I mean? not if I die before my mom. Well... Or if you pay the nurse enough, maybe she will like you. You know what I mean? With all that money, maybe she'll I mean. be mommy. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but my point is, you know, you, you you can't take it with you. You know what I mean? You can obviously leave it for people, which is what everyone should want to do for for their families and their loved ones. But but at the end of the day, man, it's like 
like dude to get like kind of personal too, like with my own personal yeah, life, is personal. like my my one of my sisters has a husband that is like that, bro. He he would sell me for a fucking donut. You understand? Like he he that's just how he is, bro. And with cream in it, or family, just like a regular? Dude, he he'd sell me for the most regular unglazed donut, and he would and and you could would tell because he's kind of big. But anyways, my point is, um. My entire family, bro, every single holiday, Christmas, birthdays, Thanksgiving, everything. We don't even set up a plate for him anymore. We know he's not going to be there. He doesn't fuck with the family because we, all we care about isn't money. He doesn't fuck with any, any of that, bro. All he cares about is money. All he, his entire life's validation is how much money he has. My sister, you know, him, my sister aren't doing well. Like they're together for the kid or whatever, this and that. And obviously it's super personal here, but that... That one person in my life is such an immediate example of how not to be with family and how not to prioritize money over anything. Because, bro, if he was to pass away, I wouldn't fucking know. And my family wouldn't. And I don't know that they would care that much. You know what I mean? To be fair, like you're saying Thanksgiving, December, et cetera, like he's missing Christmas and shit. Ad revenue is fucking crazy. <laughs> well, he misses Easter. He misses Labor Day. He misses everything. You know what I mean? Yeah, and that is and, actually and, how I was. 100% yeah, how I was. Yeah, yeah, but 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 I hope you weren't as as nasty as he is because he's he he also has the personality of of a of a rich old man too. You know what I mean? Like he's not like right. when you see him, you're not like oh sick, good to see you. You know? Because if it was, yeah, we check up on him and shit. But but you know, it's just the 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 relationship has gotten so bad with that person specifically that it is just sad to know that it was because of money that's my it, that's thing money tears people is, apart dude. oh my god it brings out the oh worst in people that's why like absolutely it's like not yeah, even me, worth it, sometimes you know just yeah, for me it wasn't about money it was about drive i always needed to push myself further and further oh, for and sure. further for sure and money like i didn't Cars, maybe I care, but all the rest, I didn't care. Yeah. I, like my clothes, I didn't care anything because like I didn't have time to wear them. So true. Um, yeah, yeah I, that's that's cool that we touched up on that, too, because people don't really realize it. We've had so many guests yeah. on here who have had money, who have not who have had and not had. And the the common equate the common factor here is that all of them have agreed that money doesn't make you happy. Because you get yeah. there and you realize, like, you need drive, you need purpose. You know, I can, yeah. I can wake up today with the same amount of money that I have in my bank account or way less, and I still need my purpose. Like, it's going oh to be the same. Like, it's not even about money. It's about figuring out how to make it, you know, make the next leap or whatever it is. So. Yeah, but then family beats purpose. I, okay, I mean drive. Family beats drive. Like does in, so. Let me ask you a question. You said you saw their stuff through FaceTime. That's your kids. It's a little bit different. But like yeah. now that now that we have technology, I tell this to my mom all the time. I don't need to be in Georgia. I don't need to yeah. be next to you because I'm gonna see you for five minutes in the day anyway. You know, I'm gonna go. Yeah. I'm gonna be doing my own shit. I can FaceTime you for those five to ten minutes. We still get to see each other. We still get to. Uh, you know, see our emotions and talk, et cetera, for, for the same amount of time. Like, and I'll visit once every two months. Like it's, I think it's much easier now. I know you said FaceTime didn't do it for you, but that's like seeing your kids grow up. I think it's a little different. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. way different. Yeah. But like, like I think that kind of does the job for me being able to FaceTime people, you know, you don't have to be here and there and it's, it's fun. It makes you enjoy it when you go back and you realize how much you love your family. But like, also, you have to pursue your own. This is me you have as to younger. Pursue your own yeah. yeah. Um. But no, it's a. That's a. I'll make sure when I have kids, to be there. Yeah. I'm just not that's gonna have kids. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> that's the plan. No, actually, like, like, uh, on on a completely side note, I think I'm 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 gonna adopt. I think at least one. I'm gonna adopt I a kid. Just thought about that. Wait, when actually? I saw you, I I thought like. Yeah, they adopt He's a lot the of guy. yeah, Edwin, yeah. And yeah, Edwin. see, I was born in the jungle, and typically they're chimps. Uh -huh. But I'm hoping to I'm hoping to upgrade and yeah. get myself a real a real human baby. Really? You, know what I mean? you can he yeah. can pull that off. 
Yeah, I don't know. Looking, Looking like, like a this champ. Fucked yeah. up. <laughs> they, 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 imagine, I, imagine I walk in to adopt a kid. They're like, like you, you want to, you want us to trust you with a child? Like, show we're, us, we're need, show they, us your, your revenue, uh, er, your your earnings reports, and then <laughs> you fucking show them Twitch, and they're like, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> they're like, they're like, they like, explain to us what you do again. You play video games, and, and you want you us look to like trust that? you with a child. <laughs> yeah. Um, Pappy, is there anything? What are your plans for the next few months, etc.? Where can people find you? Um, the plans for next month is um, I have one of the goals. I want to stream much more. Oh. I've been streaming a lot, um, but I think my voice is a little bit boring because either they come in to fall asleep yeah. or during tournaments, and that works, during tournaments, they come in and they just listen to me to stay calm. So you know what the solution to that is? Because I don't, I don't think I have a boring voice at all, and <laughs> I still get bored if I'm not playing music. Yeah, you play music with it, bro, and it covers all the, it makes up for all the vibes that aren't there. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. You just play some nice music, and you can, it keeps the vibes there, even if you're just chill. Yeah. Plus, you got no strikes on your account. Might as well just full send Fuck it. it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Or yeah, ASMR, we, dude, get 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 one of them ear things. You know what I mean? Get like I oh, can, your no, mics. No. No, Pappy, no, I no, could no, see no. you in a bikini. <laughs> yeah, yeah, one of the green strings that Borat wears. Yeah, one hundred percent. Think about I'd it. Pull up that. the TwitchCon Amsterdam like that. You're playing the part. Yeah, actually, I'm just taking new medicine, and my boobs grow from it. So. Really? <laughs> I like yeah. that. That's perfect. Yeah, so it's perfect. Hey, it works. <laughs> you get my tier three. You know what, what I mean? is it? Is it? Do they do they give you steroids for the uh, for the disease? Yeah. Yeah. They yeah, it's kind of steroids. Yeah. Um, but it, like one of the side effects that they grow. Yeah, yeah. Of actually, course. Uh, once I started with my medicine, I gained thirty kilograms. Whoa. I've always been a a super skinny guy. I really? went from a, a small now to a XL. And what's that do? XXL. Lack lack of appetite? Is it the it's the opposite, right? Because sometimes not eating will make you gain weight. Um, my body just holds so much yeah. uh, water. Like okay. my my yeah my my kid my kid thinks I'm pregnant. Not anymore. But <laughs> when he was younger, are growing your your, yeah, so, your little belly for sure. Yeah. What and are you naming I, I, him? Yeah. Any Arab, name? I think. Arab? Yeah. Arab. <laughs> that will work. That, yeah. That'll work for both woman or male. Yeah. They, they won't see the difference between me, so. Yeah. <laughs> um, Pappy, where can they find you? Your links are down there in the description, but say them out loud. Uh, on Twitter, always Poppy. On Twitch, always mm. Poppy. Basically everywhere. Always oh, poppy. A W Y Z. How did that name come out, by the way? I was trying to figure that out myself. My theory is that you want to say always happy, and then you're like, all right, I'm a dad, no. always poppy. No. <laughs> I, uh, it, it, it really what it says, always the dad to everybody in the scene. So, um, yeah, I want to be the the cool i like that cool cool dad and you are and bro and I, i'll vouch for that bro like dude pappy's always in my stream talking about we're fucking whenever we're talking about anything bro like the other day we we're trying we were talking about milfs and you know durf was helping me text text the milf and pappy shout was in there too yeah shout out durf <laughs> and and pappy was in there too giving advice and shit like he's you know he's with it. He's with the 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 brainless shit. So, uh. but the amount of time that I typed something and then I erased it because I think, oh, I can't do that with my image. Yeah, it's, it's so yeah. <laughs> I felt that, and that's uh, like I said, that goes back to what we're building. You know that I would hate. There's things that even I stop myself from tweeting because I'm like, the internet's not ready. It's not that I don't think it's funny. It's that I think, all right, the internet's not ready for this kind of joke. You know. Like, like things yeah. that will crack. And I was actually talking to chat about that yesterday. What if we released, because I was watching it. You know who Chase Hero is? No. Okay. So I was watching, you know how there's the Maverick Club, the Sidemen Plus Club, like those yeah. like the Nelk, the Full Send Club. So I was watching the episode with the guy who created that, that software. And they were talking about basically like, all right, 
So what if you had a platform where you could release whatever you wanted? So imagine all the unfiltered jokes that we make, Edwin, or something while we're driving. Imagine if those were all recorded and we send them to an editor and like those go out. Well, they're not going out on YouTube or Twitter or whatever. They're going out specifically to people who are literally paying so that they can be like, they fuck with that, you know? They're paying yeah, $10 yeah. a month or $20 a month, whatever, for the extra content that we yeah. wouldn't that we wouldn't put on YouTube, not because we don't like it, like the YouTube content wouldn't change, but because the internet's like not ready for him. The internet's too soft for him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so like, what yeah. if it was just unfiltered? This is from that club. And yeah, and the we, community... call it, we call it the monthly racist. <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that's my point. Like there's a lot of people that want to type and shit that don't because of their image. And yeah, you know, I wish, I wish the world was more unfiltered and it wasn't like that because I think eventually there's going to be a, there's going to be a wave of people who are sick of it, you know? And yeah. It's and then they're going to lose their starting. sponsors and then they're going to lose their sponsors and they'll be like, Oh, never mind. Mm, yeah, yeah, actually, yeah. Never mind. <laughs> you know, the key there <laughs> yeah. is to not take any sponsors. Um, yeah, true. Guys, make sure to check out Pappy on his socials. Uh, also, Just one, yeah, one more ahead. thing. Go ahead. I know you, I know you liked him. Also 100% check out Cope. Cope is great. Hey, Cope is great. Yeah. We'll Cope, so, um, Good. If you have issues with uh, with your parents, reach out to Coke. Coalition and of Parents and Esports boys. Esports. They're the yes, sir. Dude, you know I've been supporting them since the beginning. I know they're, yeah. they're legends, bro. They're great Cause, people. Because Shay people. Shay was an active in my chat heavily before she uh she had to like before she started Cope and got super busy with that. But she would like send me like the logo, like is this good? Send me the and so I, I love Cope, bro. I love Cope. <laughs> dude, dude, you know real quick, you know what the funniest shit I ever see on Twitter is when that... she ratios her own son, bro. I oh, love really? that shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like du like yeah. Duster will tweet something and then she'll tweet like a joke under it and then just fucking destroys his original tweet. I'm like, bro, <laughs> yeah. how embarrassing would it be to get ratioed by your own mom? Like Cope shit. is uh Cope is great. They uh I'm doing a charity stream for them. 20, 20, yeah. day, 20 to 30 days I'm going to try um, in November, December. The barbecue? Because no. you, you told it on stream. Yeah, yeah we, we, we thought of doing the barbecue. We realized that this house is too small to get a barbecue right now, to be sure. honest. Yeah. Like, we keep saying we're going to get it, but this fucking house is tiny, bro. Like, it, yeah. it, wouldn't, it wouldn't fit it well. Um, but no, it's going to be a 20 to 30 day subathon. And then all the sub sure. money really goes to them, like the, like the last one. Uh, okay. It's 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 I owe them, bro. I owe them. Cope is great. They've uh, they've helped Cope us with a lot great. of shit. Boys, make sure to check out yeah. Cope. Check out Pappy. Also, we're on Spotify, Apple, or YouTube. Wherever you guys want to find us. If you guys are wondering like what happened with the Branders question, because I know we haven't asked and a lot of you guys complain sometimes. Guys, it got boring. We got sick of we got sick of asking the same question for ninety five episodes straight. Like, you know what I'm saying? There's only so much you can do something before. It's like, all right, what's next? So we'll come up with another question, maybe. Who knows? We'll come up with another brainless question, but hey, so so what he's trying to say is leave the most fucked up question you could imagine in the comments below, and we'll definitely use it next time. Yep. And blame Pappy for it. Yep. All right. Yeah. We'll see you guys later. Peace. <laughs>